Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Struggle Create Strength and welcome to the fifth ever episode of Mindset Mondays. Mindset Mondays is meant to call you out on some of your BS, get you introspective within your own life and also give you some tips, tricks and tools on how to take your life to that next step. Now, I do want to say thank you to everyone who does continue to share all the podcasts and all the posts on their social media and tagging Struggle Create Strength. It makes the biggest difference and although it doesn't seem like much, it truly does help not only the podcast and the platform grow, but it also leads to helping more people, which is what this is all about. So thank you for that. And also a huge thank you to people that do leave ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts, as again, it does boost the podcast up in the algorithm, which then leads to helping more people. Now, today's episode is all about time and more so how time is priceless. Time is everything. Time never stops ticking. Time is, time is everything. You can, you can look at time in so many different ways. And for myself, I've started to look at time in a variety of a mass variety of different ways. And for me, when I think about time, I typically think about being late. I typically think about how I have so much time and even more so I have fallen into the state of thinking about how much time I actually have left. I don't know if you think about death and I don't know if you think about how much time you have left on this planet, but that's something that I think about a lot. And it's not meant to be weird. It's not meant to be freaky and dark. It's meant to put things into perspective on how much time we actually have and what we should be doing within our own lives. So for myself, death and time and all of this life all coincides with each other and I'm going to explain why. But the very, very first thing I want to talk about is being late. Being late is something that I was probably the worst one for it. Absolutely, I was the worst one for it and I have a lot of friends that can attest to that. But I also have definitely changed some things up and worked on that a lot. I'm not saying I'm never late, but I'm saying that I make sure that nine out of 10 times I am on time. And there's so many different ways to actually change that. But one big thing that definitely changed the outlook on it was a couple conversations that I had with somebody that I recently had on the podcast named Yuyu Kitamura. And Yuyu really put things into perspective for myself when thinking about time and more so about being late. Being late is something that I used to never really take into consideration on how it was impacting other people. And I never really thought about how it was impacting myself other than it brought on a lot of stress. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of people. I'm sure bringing on stress comes with being late. And there's so many different ways to actually change all of that. But that's, that's for another time, another episode. But more so what I want to talk about is what being late is and how it really affects other people. So when you're late, you are basically halting somebody else's everyday life and you're making them wait for you, which is wasting their time. And this is exactly what you you said. She said that you can never give somebody back time once you've taken it from them. So when you're late, you are taking away that time out of their day for your own selfish needs. Because I guarantee you when you were late, there was something that held you back. There's something that made you procrastinate. There was something that was a selfish act that forced you to be late. I'm not saying that's every single time because life is life, life happens. But for the most part, we can really retrace our steps and figure out what it was. Maybe it was that extra two minutes that you spent on your phone. Maybe you took an extra five minutes in the shower. Maybe you snoozed your alarm. There's so many different things that happen on a daily basis that we don't necessarily think about that actually impact the rest of our day, especially when we're being late. And when you're late and when you force somebody to sit there and wait for you, you are taking that time out of their life and you're forcing them to wait for you. They don't know when you're going to show up. They don't know that you're going to be late. 
So sometimes maybe it is just a forewarning that, hey, you know what, I'm running 10 minutes behind. Because then it allows them to do what they want to do to fill up that time. But if you're just late, then they're going to sit there and they're going to wait and they're going to waste their time. And that one minute, two minutes, three minutes is taken out of their life forever. They can never get that time back. So when you leave somebody late, or sorry, when you leave somebody waiting for you for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, you're taking 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes out of their life. You are taking that out of their life. I never thought about it this way. I always thought, oh, do you know what? They can wait. They, it's not a big deal. They, they'll understand. They'll understand. I used to always, always, always tell myself that. And even more so when it was somebody that I was close with. Oh, oh he's, he's my friend. He'll, he'll understand. Oh, oh it's, it's my parents. They'll understand. I never, I never, ever looked at it the same way that you, you looked at it. And when she brought that to my attention, I had this big epiphany and this big life, this, cause I've been working, I've been working on being on time for a long time. But when she said it like that, it shifted everything. So now if my alarm goes off, I I never, ever snooze it. And I make sure I set up my whole, my whole morning routine and, and even where I set my alarm to make sure that I never snooze that alarm again, because I know that that could impact if I'm late throughout the day. The second I snooze my alarm means that I will probably be late for something throughout the day. And when you, you brought all of all of this again into my, basically into perspective for myself, I really did some, some searching and some reflection on all those times that, I have held people up before and there's so many times that I could have easily just texted them and said, I'm going to be five minutes later. I'm going to be 10 minutes late or 15 minutes late or make plans for later. But I never did because I figured it wasn't a big deal. But now looking back on it and realizing that I took that 10 or 15 or 20 minutes out of their life. Now you feel guilt ridden almost. And it shouldn't be in a way that makes you get all dwell on the past, everything, because you can't change that. But what you can change is how you act moving forward. So the next time you're going to be later, the next time you think you, everything's all crammed, open up your day, spread out your day, open up some more time for yourself. Allow yourself to take more time to do certain things because nobody's ever going to look down on you and degrade you for giving yourself more time for eliminating some more stress. That's a very, very crucial thing in your everyday life is to eliminate stress in the best ways possible. And not only does it come from kind of fabricating your life into a way where you're never late, but also making sure that you're always doing things that you enjoy to do. And that you're, you're living a life that doesn't necessarily bring you much stress, but it's more so it it brings on, it, it brings on excitement and it brings on maybe, maybe it even makes you a little bit scared or if it is stress, it's in a good positive way. And that's what you want. You don't want to be stressed because you're late because when you're stressed and you're late and you hop in your car, you're driving and you have all this stress coming over you. And then when that person in front of you cuts you off and it slows you down, then it turns into frustration. And then it leads into a day of frustration. And then everything just spirals. So when you set yourself up and you focus on the time that you have and the time that you're giving yourself and that time that you're basically giving to other people as well, then you won't have all of this extra stress. If you eliminate, if you eliminate being late, you automatically release so much stress and you slow yourself down. When you can just go about your everyday life and you don't have to worry about being late, you will slow yourself down. And there's so many ways that you can do it. 
But a lot of people want to sleep that extra 10 minutes. A lot of people want to scroll their phone for an extra 10 minutes. There's so many different things that a lot of people do. And then at the end of the day, they talk about how they don't have time. And they're late because they don't have time. And that actually transitions into the next topic about this. And it is the fact that so many people claim that they don't have time. You have time. Let me say that again. You have time. You do. You have time. You can make time. You are the one that's in control of your days. Schedule your days. It's, it's so simple. It's so easy. Schedule your days and time lot it so that you know what you have to do and you know what time you have and maybe cut back on some of the social media. Cut back on some of the Netflix because those things aren't things that are keeping you alive. They're things that you enjoy to do. There's nothing wrong with them. But you also need to realize that there's so many other things that you could be doing that will help you save time. And it's there's so many different ways. And all these people that do claim, I've done it. I'm Again, I'm not perfect by any means. I've been there. I've done it. And sometimes I continue to do it. But it's the art of really acknowledging what you're doing and then making changes and adjusting to some of those things. And I've, I have claimed that I don't have time or I ha- or even more so I have time. When somebody says I have time, all that is, is saying I will procrastinate. I'm okay with procrastinating. Oh yeah, I have to, I have to do this today, but I have time. Oh, that would be so cool to go on that trip. But I, yeah, I have time. You do not know that you have time. A better phrase would be, I hope I have time. Because that's basically what you're saying. If you're putting something off and you say, I have, I have time. All you're doing is just prolonging that experience. You're, you're hoping and wishing for something to happen in the future rather than making it happen now. A lot of times the people that claim that they have time means that they're too lazy to start something or that they're okay with procrastinating, that they would rather do nothing than do something. And I guarantee you, you've been there. I will guarantee that you have been there and you have said, I would love to do that, but I can't because I don't have time or even more so, I can't wait to do that when I have time. And then again, I have time. I have time to do this. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. And this one's going to hit hard for myself. But this past week, this past week, the community that I'm in basically, and my, my family, my close family friends, we all lost somebody that was... I would say a very close friend and a very, very amazing person. Somebody that was so selfless and so amazing and he deserves so much credit for the things that he's done in his life. And just a person that never should have had this happen to them so so young. And this man who I am going to remain nameless, but he just previously passed away due to cancer. And I want to really put some things into perspective for a lot of people because this is what it did for me. And this is what loss especially has done for me. Is that all those times that we've all claimed that I have time, I have time, I know we've all done it, I've done it, and... This puts it into perspective. Approximately a week ago now, I would say approximately a week ago, a week and a half ago, this man was told he's battled cancer for his life and he's been, he, it's been a journey for him, especially over the past couple of years, but he was told 
that he has two to eight weeks to live. Two to eight weeks to live. Imagine being told that. Imagine being told that after two to eight weeks, you will no longer be here. See, so many of us, we don't have, we don't have to go through that suffering of knowing that we're going to die in two to eight weeks or knowing the exact date of when we're going to die. We're blessed with the fact that we have not a clue on when that day will come and when that day will be and how it'll happen. So imagine this, imagine you're sitting there in his shoes and you get told that you have two to eight weeks to live and you know exactly how it's going to happen and you know exactly what it's going to feel like. Put yourself in those shoes. Yeah, let that sink in just a little bit. Because as I do this, I have goosebumps running down me and I am fighting every last inch of me not to start crying and not to start freaking out because this is this puts so much into perspective. Think about all those struggles that you might be encountering right now. Now think, if you were told that you had two to eight weeks left to live in your life, would all those struggles really matter? I'm going to say that for 90% of us, they don't mean shit. And I, trust me, I am the very first one to feel sympathetic for people that are going through some stuff and the very first one that will stand by your side and help you through it. And I always will. But I also want you to realize that there's some people just like this man that has gone through hell and back and been told that you have two to eight weeks to live. I will guarantee you that those struggles that you have in your life don't even compare to that. And I will guarantee that. And I'm not saying this to make you feel even worse about some of the stuff that you're going through or to feel like you're a failure in any sort. That is not the case at all. It's not meant to do that. I know how hard it is. I know what those struggles are like. And I know that you also are strong enough to overcome them. And the reason why I talk about this stuff and talk about using the perspective thing with and basically comparison of your life and your struggles as to this man's who is told that he has two to eight weeks to live, it's not meant to make you feel bad about, about all this pain and struggles that you're going through. That's not what it's meant to do. It's meant to show you that sometimes there's some things that are worse. And that it's it's a <laughs> You are blessed with the opportunity to actually sh- turn this around. The, I'm sure there's very few people, if any, that are listening to this podcast right now that have this, have basically have this exact same thing being said to them where they have two to eight weeks to live. And if you are, I want you to reach out to me today and I want to have a conversation with you. But for those of you that aren't in those shoes, I seriously just want you to put yourself in those shoes for one minute. And I want you to compare them to your struggles. I want you to see if they're on the same wavelength. And for some it might be. For others, I know it's not. And I know that you're strong enough to overcome the things that you're going through. And I know that you will overcome the things that you're going through. Because this is just a part in your life that is going to lead to something greater. Unless you don't allow it to. Unless you sit there and you feel sorry for yourself until the day that you get told that this is the end. Or that there is no, there is no coming back from it. And again, that's not meant to put such darkness and sadness on your story. 
But what it's meant to do is just really show you that you have the capability and the opportunity to actually make your life exactly what you want it to be. And you're blessed or more so, yeah, I would say you're blessed with not knowing when the day is that you are going to pass and you don't know how. So that means you have endless opportunities. You start today. Today can 100% be that first step into the rest of your life. And all those struggles, all those past experiences, everything can simply just be your past. Your future can start right now. Because with time, we always need to acknowledge that it never stops. It never stops ticking. We are constantly getting older, constantly aging. We're constantly running out of time. We're running out of time in this lifetime. I don't know what happens after death. I have no idea. I don't know how many lives I've already lived. I don't know anything that happens outside of this time that we have right now. And what death does and what these tragic events really do to us is it puts everything into perspective on how important time really is. We're gifted a certain amount of time on this planet for a reason. And you have a purpose, whether you believe it or not, you have a purpose. You impact everyone's life around you in some form or another. And you have the ability to do whatever you want to do in your life. You do. Because we all think we don't have enough time. We all think that we all think that we have time. But you don't know how much time you have. You don't know when your last day will be. Oh my gosh. And you don't know. Time is so uncertain, but we do know that one day we will die. We know that. And we also know that time never stops. It's continuous. So if you think that you don't have time, then that should be a clear indicator that you should start doing whatever you want to do right now. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be told that I have two to eight weeks to live and regret anything in my life. And I don't want to pass knowing that I could have done more. And this man that did pass and was told that he had two to eight weeks to live, he ended up only living approximately five days after he was told that. So again, things don't plan out as you're told. Things don't always work out in the way that you think they might. And one day, all of this does come to an end. And I can't show my love and appreciation and even gratitude towards this one person and thank him for blessing my life in the ways that he did. But what I can do is share what I've learned from it because I know it can help other people. It's the same thing I've done with all the passings that I've experienced in the recent future. It's shitty to say that death is becoming more normalized in my own life. That's not something that I'm ever, that I ever thought I would have to say. It's, it blows my mind. And to even think that I'm sitting down here now talking about how all of this puts our life into perspective and how time is so, so important and is pri like utterly priceless is insane. I don't think everyone knows or will live up to everything that they they want to do in their life. I hope everyone can. 
But the tough part is, is that once we start accomplishing all the things that we set out for ourselves, we'll always have more that we want to do. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the beauty of life is that there's endless opportunities until there isn't. And just really cherish those around you. Really cherish that time that you have. Because you never know when somebody will leave your life. You never know when you'll leave somebody else's life. You know what you never know anything. Everything is an uncertain. Everything <laughs> everything is so up in the air that when you really think about it in the whole grand scheme of things, you should just go out and do whatever you want to do. Within reason, obviously. But go follow your dreams. Go follow your passions. Live up to that potential that you have. Do the things that you want to do. Because what I'm going to say is that from my own personal life, what I've learned most is that... Actually, is, I don't fully recall the quote, but I, I heard it the other day, actually. And now that I'm thinking about all of this, it puts it... Basically, you can't say it any better. And it's... It's basically saying that I'd rather ask for forgiveness in the future than beg for approval now. And I think that hits so hard. Because when I think about my own life and I think about everything that's happened in my life, if I didn't chase my own dreams and my own passions and I didn't go against what everyone else thought was right. I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't have these conversations that I have. And that is heavy. That's really heavy. I don't know what, I don't know everything that my future holds. And I've accepted that. I don't, that doesn't bother me knowing a day by day schedule of what the rest of my life looks like. Because I think it's so important to just cherish every single day that you have, to cherish every single opportunity that you have. And there, you can break that down in so many different ways. But what I've learned so much through all of my own struggles through close friends and family passing is that time, time doesn't care what you're going through. Time doesn't care if you had a hard day. Time doesn't care if you've had a hard life. Time truthfully doesn't, <laughs> doesn't care at all what you have been through what you will go through. It doesn't care. It moves on. And it continues to move on. And it never takes any amount of time to stop in its tracks. It never dwells on the past. It never looks forward to the future. It never, it never does anything other than live in the present. And yes, I just personified time and gave it this <laughs> gave it basically a character but it's it's true and sometimes that's how what we have to do we have to do the same thing we have to live so in the now because how we live in the now 100% impacts what our future will look like it is what we do right now is impacting our future Filming this podcast for myself is impacting my future. It's getting me one step closer to my goals. It's maybe making me wiser. It's giving me more confidence. It's helping me in the future. It's going to help me in certain situations and obstacles that I encounter. And it's the same with your life. All the things that are going on in your life and all the things that are happening right now in your present life are impacting where you'll be in the future. 
which is then your past. Your present will be your past. So why not make it something that you you look forward or you cherish looking back on? Right now, if you're not happy in your life, you're not happy with your past, make today an amazing day. Make it the best day ever. Do something for yourself so that tomorrow when you look back on today, you're happy and you smile. You say you did it. And then in a year from now, you can look back on today and say the same thing. I don't look back on all of my traumatic experiences and dwell on them. Yeah, those were terrible times in my life, but now I look at a month ago, two months ago, six months ago, and I say, wow. Wow. I did pretty good. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm here. I'm living. I'm breathing. I'm shining a light on mental health. I'm sharing my stories. I'm sharing my struggles. Wow. That's a pretty damn good, it's a pretty damn good life. I'm happy with my past. I'm happy with my present. And I'm gonna be happy with my future because my future lies in my hands right now. My future is 100% a mere reflection of what I do today and what I do tomorrow and the next day and the next and so forth. So every single day, if you're late, if you're taking up somebody's time, reflect back on that and ask yourself or you more so tell yourself that you just wasted five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of someone else's life, of their life. You took that time from them and they can never get it back. They will never have that time back. And again, it's not to guilt rid you. It's to show you how valuable time truly is. We all wish we could give people more time. We all wish we could bring people back that didn't have that time. But right now, we have time. We do. We have time. And I want you to cherish that. I want you to go out today and make something of that. Utilize your time. Put it to the best use possible. Make your life into what you want it to be. Because instead of saying, I have time, I can do it later. Instead of putting it off, when in reality, you don't know if you have time. You have no idea. For all you know, you could end this podcast and your day could end. I pray to God it doesn't, but it very well could. So when you say you have time, you'll do it later. You don't know. I don't know. So make the most of right now. And always put things into perspective. That your time seriously could end at any any given time any given time. I want you to leave. I just basically want to leave you with, with all of those. And I don't want you to look back on this podcast and think it was a way of dipping into a deep, a deep place or anything. I just want to really shine a light on perspective within time. Because the saddest part about the whole entire story with this man that just recently passed this this weekend was when he was told he had two to eight weeks. Do you want to know what his one of his first things were that he ever said? He said, I'm not ready to die. And we'll never be ready. But wouldn't it be a good feeling or a better feeling if you get told that and you're able to sit back and say, you know what, I'm actually, I'm, I'm obviously not happy that this is happening, 
but I've lived. I've done what I've wanted to do. I've followed my dreams. I've followed my passions. I did exactly what I wanted to do in this life. That's what I want to have everyone have. That's what I want to have. I want to be able to sit there and say that I've done it, that I've lived my life. That's why don't waste your time on people that don't serve you benefit. Don't waste your time in places that don't serve you benefit. If it allows you to grow, then it's obviously a good place. But if it keeps you encaged and belittles you, then it's not for you. I hope everyone enjoyed this podcast. And I hope you seriously are enjoying these Mindset Mondays. I love them. I truly do. It brings me great joy. brings me happiness. And just to know that people are actually taking the time out of their day to maybe better their mindset, get better, learn some new things, even just shift their perspective in general like we just talked about. I think it's amazing. And I look forward to continue bringing these to everyone. And again, I truly do thank everyone who does listen to these, who listens to all the stories that come on the podcast. And I can't thank you enough for sharing everything on your stories, tagging Struggle Create Strength, commenting on the photos, really allowing this to become a community more so than just a platform. That's what's most important to me. And there will be so many really, really exciting things coming. I am in the works with so many things that I'm so excited to bring to you. Some of them are in the very near future and some of them are in the distance future. But I will assure you that Struggle Create Strength is going absolutely nowhere ever. It will be around until the day I die. And hopefully it continues to be around even after that. But thank you so much to everyone who does listen And be sure to tune in this Thursday for another very exciting episode of Struggle Create Strength, who features a very, very courageous person that his story story will shock you. So I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. And just remember that everyone has a story.